Hello everyone, I'm Virginia, one of our campus organizer. Today, talk about the seals and data storms. The last minute of presentation will be the question and answer part. Please write your question in the chat box. It's now my pleasure to present Eric Marchesi, Managing Director at Orin One. Thank you so much and have a good webinar. Eric. Uh, good morning to everybody. It is a pleasure to be here today to share our experience with you. Uh, my name is Eric Marchesi and I'm the managing director of uh, Oring One, an Italian company specialized in the production of uh, Oring, especially in uh, big dimensions. Uh, I'm here today to uh, talk about uh, rubber compound and rubber seals, and the title of the webinar is really Seals and Elastomers. And the topic of the webinar are rubber compounds for the first part. And I will tell you also something about rubber molding in the second part. Uh, we start immediately. Um, and in the first part, I will explain you better how is, uh, 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 how is made a rubber compound. Uh, I will give you an overview of the compound available on the market, some uh, information, technical information about the characteristic of the most used compound in the sector oil and gas, and uh, the effect of uh, the high and low temperature on the compound, and that's very, very important. Um, I, I, I don't want to give you uh, very technical details, but I hope to give you some general information that you can use during your, your work. We, we don't go deeper in the technical details. And we start immediately, and, and that's the basis. So the difference between the natural rubber and the synthetic rubber. Um, very simple, natural rubber is obtained for, from the EVA tree, and from this uh, syrup, we, we obtain the latex rubber that is most used in uh, some other market, not, not uh, in the technical ones. And as you can see, it is used to, for the production of gloves, uh, sole shoes, uh, baby pacifier, and so on. Uh, we concentrate more on the synthetic rubber obtained from hydrocarbons and with uh, the chemical um, plant where we can obtain styrene, butadiene, and so on. And on your right, there is there are pictures of uh, um, basis polymers. Uh, basis polymers that are used to produce rubber compound. And that's the first uh, important thing. So, as you can see, um, the rubber compound is a mix of uh, different ingredients. Uh, as the cake, as this is a, a simple example, uh, this, the cake for, for, the, for the production of these cakes, uh, we need uh, uh, flowers, chocolate, strawberry, and eggs. And for the same, for, for the production of the compound, we need uh, a basis polymer, what we have seen before, and fillers, a lot of fillers, diff different fillers, carbon black, uh, barite, kaolin, vulcanization agent, and so on. The mix of the ingredient uh, of the cake which is, is able to produce the cake. The mix of the, uh, of the ingredient for uh, the compound is able to produce the compound, very simple. And as you can see, with the chocolate of the cake, uh, we can choose different uh, manufacturer. I can choose a uh, chocolate of Lind, Ferrero, Nestlé, and the same is with the ingredient of the compound. As you can see, in example, if I have, I can, I want to produce an FKM material, an FKM compound. I have to choose a basis polymer able to produce this compound with the fillers. In this case, in example, the basis polymer could be produced from Kimors, a new name of a new branch of DuPont, and they produce the basis polymer called Viton. Viton is not the compound, but it is only the basis polymer. Uh, but I can choose also another type of uh, uh, basis polymer as the chocolate. I can choose, in example, a, a basis polymer of Sauvé, and it is called Technoflon, or 
from 3M Dynion, it is called with another name, and so on. That's very important because usually we receive requests from from our customer for I don't know an or an O-rings in uh, F in Python 90 short break. Uh, it is not correct, uh, or it is correct if I use a compound with the basis polymer of chemo, so the Python. In this case, I can call this compound Python. But if inside the compound I have not used a Viton original from DuPont, I cannot call you Viton. I have to call this compound FKM. Be careful. And how we can produce this compound? Very simple. We have a mix on the left and a closed mix. On the right, an open mix. I put all these ingredients, I told you before, in this mix and I mix. Very simple. After a sort of time, I obtain this paste this uh, plastic material that I can use to produce uh, seals, gasket, o-rings, and so on. And on the market, you can find a lot of different compounds. Uh, here you have a list of what is it available at the moment. Uh, and in blue, there are the compound, the most used compound in the oil and gasket, the black one are used in, 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 in the other market. And, and now we go a little bit uh, deeper in the details uh, in order to show you more details about uh, uh, the blue compound. Um, very simple, the PDM and NDR, um, these are uh, probably the most used compound in, in the seals market uh, with the temperature range for the first from minus 45 to 150 and different hardness is very, a PDM is a, an excellent uh, material resistant to atmospheric agent and ozone and if it, if it is a um, peroxide cure, it is absolutely excellent also when uh, a, a good compression set uh, is required. Uh, NBR is more, more, more or less the same material with a good uh, mechanical uh, characteristic and an excellent resistance to mineral oils and greases. Uh, it is also used in the, um, in the oil and gas market. Unfortunately, the maximum temperature is only uh, uh, temperature, uh, um, ma maximum temperature um, suggests this is only 130 and, and 10 degrees. Sorry. The third one is uh, FVMQ or pure silicon. That's the normal uh, name used uh, into the market. It is a, a, a good uh, compromise between uh, the, the cold temperature, the low temp, uh, and the resistance uh, to uh, mineral oils because it is more or less a VMQ we, where uh, it is added a, a sort of a percentage of uh, fluorine that can permit uh, this, uh, um, um, this resistance to the mineral oils. And uh, it is uh, really used, in, for example, in the actuators when the, they need to guarantee a very low temperature in the application. Uh, VMQ is the silicon. Uh, has a, a same, um, a better range of temperature because uh, it can be used from minus 62 plus 220. And uh, uh, it is, uh, it, it has a good risk to water and steam, but uh, is not uh, suitable for fuel, acid and alkalines. Uh, these are the first four um, compounds. Now we go a little bit deeper with the most used compound uh, in the oil and gas. Uh, the first one is FKM, is really one of the most used, uh, and it is uh, one, uh, it is a, a, an excellent compound for chemical stability, uh, excellent uh, at uh, high temperature, uh, excellent for vacuum uh, performance, mechanical performance, good uh, permeability. Uh, the problem is that it's not absolutely recommended for ketones or nitro. Be careful because with this media, the, 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 the material could be melted very well, very easily. Uh, it is okay. The, the standard FKM is not recommended for low temperature, but uh, uh, at the moment there are uh, special compound and the, re the, the research is very very in that month with uh, uh, some compound that can reach also minus 50. 
the problem is, is the price on, 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 on this type of special compound and also the steam resistance is the same with the standard material uh, is not recommended for steam resistance but there are some uh, special uh, compound uh, that able to, to resist this medium and as I told you before the polymer trade name from Chemos is Viton the polymer not the compound uh, there are some difference between FKM. Uh, the first, there are two families, two big families. Uh, the first one is the copolymers, and the, the second one are terpolymers. Copolymers are um, all the FKM standard with fluorine content about from 65 to 66 percent, and it uh, it is the 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 the, 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 the polymer that we call Viton A. So Viton A is a, is a copolymer, the standard one, but as I told you before, there are also the same version also from uh, uh, Solvay Solexis, 3M and so on. A little bit uh, better uh, are the third polymers, uh, and the third polymers could be divided also, also in some, uh, some different uh, materials. Uh, the first one is the standard third polymers, what uh, the Viton B, in example, and as you can see, there is only 1% more of fluorine content, but uh, it is enough to guarantee a better resistance to the hydrocarbons. Uh, a step, uh, a step, a most, uh, a, 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 the best, poly, um, sorry, un attimo, so si cancelli questo poi riparto. Ok. Se vuoi puoi ripartire a fare anche tutta la slide. Eh, eh scusa perché mi sono confuso un po' di cose. Riparto a fare la slide. OK. Right. Um, OK. Uh, uh, there are two types, two big families where we can divide the uh, four elastomers. The first one is the copolymers. The second one is the third polymers. The copolymers are what we call a standard FKM, and it is represented from the Viton A, what we call the Viton A. But be careful, as I told you before, there are also other types from Technoflon, not with uh, and, and other names. Uh, the fluorine content is from 65 to 66%. The second family with uh, a little more ex uh, resistance are the third polymers. Also, the third polymers could be divided into four types. Uh, the first one, called standard third polymers, Python B, in example, has a fluorine content of 67%. It is only 1% more respect to the copolymer, but it is enough to increase the resistance at the hydrocarbons. Then we have third polymers with high chemical resistance at the power core, and it is, the, in example, the Python GF with a fluorine content of 69-70%. And other third polymers for resistance to the low temp, what we call Viton GLT, with the fluorine content of 76 to 78. And the best in the FKM family, and it is a blend between the GF and GLT for a good chemical resistance and the resistance at the, the low temp, what we call Viton GFLT, with a fluorine content from 70, 69 to 70%. Well, the, the, the GLT, GF, GFLT are also brand from DuPont. So uh, be careful because uh, it is the same as I told you before with the Viton. If you call and uh, if you order an, an O-ring or a seals and you call GLT, the supplier is, to, uh, is obliged to use the original Viton from Chemos. Otherwise, uh, he cannot call GLT. He can use uh, other brand, other, other code, PLT, VLT, what you want, but not GLT. And the same is with GF, GFT, Viton B and Viton A. HNBR, another very, uh, um, one of the most used compound in oil and gas because uh, it can be used sometimes uh, when FKM uh, is, uh, expensive or maybe is not uh, is enough uh, the HNBR. Uh, be careful because uh, the maximum temperature is 150 
Uh, there are also HNBR types that can reach 180, but uh, you have to specify at your supplier. Harden range from 50 to 98 shore, always for the high pressure, and uh, it is a compound with an excellent resistance to the oil, to the mineral, to animal fats, porous solvent, uh, uh, permanent deformation and abrasion, and so on. Uh, it's not very good compound for flame resistance, and uh, uh, also as the as the FKM. Uh, with ketones and ester, the resistance is uh, really very poor, so be careful. Um, also for the, H the HBN, there are some tips. Uh, first of all, it could be used and it is a good uh, opportunity to change this, comp to use this compound instead of FKM, where the heat resistance is not so high. And uh, I can tell you inside the, the HMDR, there is the ACN. Uh, the ACN is, as you can read, uh, acrylonitrile butadiene copolymer. And the percentage of ACN in the compound can determine uh, the characteristics. The higher ACN contact uh, can increase the resistance to the hydrocarbons. Uh, the a lower content of ACN can uh, improve the resistance to the low temp. So uh, together with your supplier, you have always to find a better compromise between uh, this content because it can change a lot uh, the final characteristics of the compound. Another very well, very most used, one used compound in the oil and gas, FFKM. Uh, you know better than me, it is very famous as a trade name, Calretz. FFKM is at the moment uh, the best compound uh, on the market. Uh, it is also the most expensive, unfortunately. But uh, we can compare this, F this material as a soft, as a gummy version of a PTFA, because uh, this compound can resist at all the chemical uh, substance. And, uh, uh, can resist up to 325 degrees. Uh, it is available in hardness range from 60 to 90-98%. And it, what we can do, it is the perfect compound if we don't consider the price. Uh, the price is absolutely very high. I will show you later something. And, uh, uh, and yeah, it is the, the, it is uh, famous for uh, the trade name from Dupont uh, Calretz, but be careful because in this case, uh, Calretz is not the name of uh, the polymer. Calretz is the name of the product because uh, if you want to buy an original Calretz O-rings, you are obliged to buy the O-rings from an official distributor because. Uh, uh, the manufacturer of the O-rings uh, cannot buy the material from DuPont. DuPont has a choice to produce inside their organization the O-rings uh, and distribute the O-rings uh, to official, official uh, distributors. If you need it, uh, contact du directly DuPont. Uh, probably they will uh, give you all the info about the official distributors. Um, uh, this is the last compound of uh, the part of the topic, and it is the uh, FEPM compound. It is not uh, very famous, this is a technical brand, but uh, we can divide these uh, uh, compounds in two big types, Viton Extreme, and it is an original uh, Viton uh, compound from DuPont, and Aflas. Aflas probably is uh, is more famous. Uh, Viton Extreme is uh, a compound between uh, uh, the FKM GFLT type and FFKM. Uh, this compound has not the heat resistance of FFKM. You can compare this compound as an FKM for the heat resistance, but uh, uh, Viton Extreme has a good, very good uh, um, resistance to the hydrocarbons and uh, uh, all what concern the chemical resistance. The fluorine content is from 68 to 69, and it could be uh, an alternative to FFKM where there are the possibility to use it only with uh, the chemical resistance. 
uh, is not so expensive as FFKM, but uh, is not cheaper as GFLT. So the price is in the between. Uh, Aflas is uh, more used because it is absolutely perfect and it is a good alternative to Viton Extreme when there is uh, the request to for the, a good resistance to H2S or when there are media, aggressive media as an example steam. That's uh, absolutely perfect. The price is not so high, but in case of uh, this, uh, um, this request of this media request, that's uh, absolutely good compound. Uh, Unfortunately, it's not so good for uh, the low temp. It's, it's not a good uh, flexibility, the low temperature, and uh, is not uh, compatible with uh, acet acetone and uh, MEC. Um, we are now at uh, another topic of the first path, and uh, it is the effect of uh, the low and high temperature on the compound. As you can see, on, on the graph, uh, um, a, a universal compound is not existing. So uh, unfortunately for each uh, temperature range and for each uh, uh, media, you have to choose a compound. Uh, probably with uh, the new FFKM compound with the low temp, uh, if we uh, consider only the temperature, it will be probably the best uh, a compound uh, on the market, but uh, as I told you before, the price is absolutely incredible and uh, uh, it's in, in a lot of things it is not possible to use it. And now we have to consider the difference, the effect difference on the low, for, for the low and the high temperature on the compound, because if we consider the high temperature, the, um, uh, the effect on the, the uh, compound could be um, permanent or not permanent. Be careful. Uh, if uh, the uh, temperature, the application temperature is not higher than the suggested temperature, the effects are reversible. What I mean, if uh, the FKM is, uh, the maximum temperature of, F of FKM suggested is 230, and in your application you have a working temperature of 250, probably you will burn the seal. And if the seal is burned, the seal is destroyed. The sealing effect is almost zero and you have to change it. So be careful because the high temperature destroy the seal. If the high temperature is not so high, so is inside the range suggested from the manufacturer, uh, you can see as first effect a hardener decrease because, of course, the compound, the heat compound became softer and the elongation increase and the load necessary to create this elongation decrease, of course. Uh, but uh, when the temperature uh, start to decrease and uh, um, became the, the, the standard temperature, in this case, these uh, uh, small effects uh, are reversible. This is an example, uh, a very short and simple example of what happens if I don't consider the heating temperature. If I have two faces and I have to seal these two faces with an O-ring, uh, I have, of course, a pressure that come out into the gap of the two faces. This pressure is not the same if I consider 100 degrees or 200 degrees, if you are talking about of an FKM O-rings, because at 200 degrees, if I have an example, an F and an O-ring in FKM 90, at 100 degrees, if I have a pressure of 100 bar, the effect on the O-ring will be soft, probably a good effect. The same pressure at 200 degrees, also for an FKM, Probably you have to consider that uh, the extrusion effect, as you can see in the picture, so the, the, the O-ring start to be extruded into the gap uh, is, uh, is possible. So be careful to consider the heating temperature of uh, the O-ring when you apply the work or when you apply a load or when you apply the pressure.
with a low temp is, uh, is not the same, but uh, all the effect on the O-rings are reversible. What I mean? Uh, if the suggested temperature of a manufacturer for the low temp is minus 20, and you have an application with minus 20, probably the O-rings or the, or, or the seal can work again. But if, you, if, if your application is uh, at uh, minus 30 or minus 40 and the suggested temperature is minus 20, be careful because uh, at, uh, after minus 20, probably the compound of the seal start to be frozen. And what happened? You can imagine uh, a, a, a compound when it's frozen is, uh, is fixed. Uh, he has not uh, uh, anymore the elastic effect and he cannot seal again your application because it's freezing, is absolutely stopped. And in this case is uh, very dangerous because if I have, an example, an O-ring, I have fixed this O-ring in a seat and also if it is that the, the O-ring is frozen, it cannot move, probably the sealing is guaranteed. But if uh, the orange is frozen, so it's uh, really stopped, it's blocked, and this orange is moving inside the seal, the, the seat, sorry, because I don't know, I have a vibration. Probably you can have a leakage on this uh, application. That's the, the reason why it's not uh, uh, easy to identify the low temp effect or the, or the low temp limit. I can give you some more info. Um, in the data sheet you, you receive uh, um, when you buy an O-ring, uh, there is a, a temperature, uh, a cold temperature called TR10. This value is detectable. Is You can find this, uh, this uh, value in the laboratory with uh, special machines. Uh, it is, uh, I cannot uh, explain you how we can uh, how can uh, how we can find this uh, this, uh, uh, this this value, but uh, it can be a, an indicator of uh, the uh, maximum temperature. Sorry, minimum temperature you can you can reach with the, with your compound. Why? Because uh, uh, the tier ten in some cases is near the DSC temperature. What is it? The DSC temperature is what we call crystallization temperature. Is uh, the temperature where the compound is frozen and it became like uh, a glass. It means no more elastic uh, uh, effect. In this case, the DSC temperature is uh, what you can say is the ultimate uh, low temp. After that, uh, it is really a risk uh, to have an application with that. And uh, we can compare the tier 10 in some cases at the DSC. So when you require at your manufacturer and your supplier a tier 10 uh, value, be careful to evaluate this, this uh, value and compare this, co this value with uh, the suggested temperature. If there is a lot of difference, please uh, call your manufacturer and maybe uh, uh, or, 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 or sure he has the experience to explain you how the, why there is this uh, big uh, difference between the two temperature. Uh, I can give you also um, a, a web address where there is a, a very interesting study from uh, the Olympus Labor Richter, is a laboratory in Germany, and there is a, a very good study about the application, about the sealing, about the leakage on the cold temperature. Please uh, read it uh, and you can better understand what uh, I have explained you at the moment. And the first part is finished. We are now in the second part. I, it is a little bit uh, um, quicker, but it is really very important because I want to explain what is it, the vulcanization and uh, uh, the production process is molding to obtain some, uh, to obtain the, the seals. Uh, first of all, what is it, the, the vulcanization? The vulcanization is the basis process necessary to produce all the seal and the gasket. It doesn't matter the, the method you use, you can use uh, the molding, you can use the, the extrusion and so on. 
the, uh, the uh, vulcanization is the basis uh, to obtain all the production, the, all the, 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 the article in rubber uh, at the moment. And what is it? Uh, it is very simple. With the vulcanization, we transform a plastic material into an elastic material. Uh, the material I show you in the first slides, uh, so the compound uh, obtained from the mixing, it, it is an, a plastic material. If you strain it, it probably you broken very easily. And it is absolutely different from the material you can taste when you have in your hand an O-ring on or a seal with uh, elastic properties. How we transform uh, this material, how we, uh, we, we, we create the rubber, the elastic rubber, is very simple. Inside, the compound, I told you before, there are fillers. And one fillers is with what we call vulcanization agents. The vulcanization agent can create what we call the cross links. You can see on the, on the yellow uh, image on, 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 on the screen. And we transform a monomer into a polymer. A very simple example. If you are a biker, probably you are using also a, a, a metallic chain to secure it when, when you park your bike. Uh, the, the, the metallic chain is made with uh, some rings jointed one by one. You can imagine the plastic material, so the monomer, as a material where the rings are inside, not closed, but inside the material, mixing in the material. When we create the vulcanization, we create also the metallic chain and we create the crosslink. In this case, we can strain the material, but then the material uh, return to the initial form, of course, with a limit. But in this case, we have created the polymer. We have created the elastic material. And how we create it? it, it during the production, if, you put, uh, if we put a piece of rubber inside, the mold, the mold has is hot and, and the, the, the hot temperature help to start this vulcanization age, the vulcanization with the vulcanization agent. So we put a piece of uh, rubber inside the mold, hot, we close the mold and the uh, action between the temperature and the time necessary to create these cron links uh, create also the vulcanization. So during the molding process, we create, we vulcanize the material and we transform an, a plastic material into an elastic material. Uh, the pressure is necessary because I, I need to create a design. In example, if I have to create an O-ring, I need a mold with the two, uh, two plate. Uh, when I put the compound, plastic compound inside, not vulcanized compound, inside the mold and start the vulcanization, what happened? The mixing between temperature and time create the vulcanization and the material start to expand. If uh, I close the material inside a mold, of course, the material with the, your expansion will uh, cover all the, uh, the design inside and in this case, I can create the seal. Very simple. So temperature, time, and pressure to be close the mold, to, to, to take more, the, close, the, the mold closer. That's the ingredient to create uh, all the seals existing. It doesn't matter if I use a molding, term, a molding or an extrusion. That's it. And very simple, uh, this, this is a compression molding uh, uh, process. Uh, you can see I have a, a machine, usually is a, a, a vertical machine. I put the material inside the mold, the blue one. The material is the blue one. I change the mold. I close the mold. I wait a time. The mold is hot. The material is covered, is, is uh, covering all, the, all the, the, the form in the mold. And after a sort of time, I have obtained in the seal. Very, very simple. It is an ideal solution in case of uh, big dimension, in case of uh, uh, not a good, not a, uh, big quantity and so on. The second one is the injection molding. Uh, in this case, the material is not loaded, is not manual loaded, but 
I inject, I, I, I inject the material through uh, a, a, a piston system. The material injected into the mold uh, cover all the cavity in, in, into the, the mold, and I obtain um, a, a seal at the end. It's not uh, very used for uh, slow for, for a, um, low quantity, and uh, it is a little bit. Uh, um, it's not the correct uh, process in case of uh, high hardness uh, compound. So it is uh, well used when it is most used when there is uh, there are big quantities and uh, standard materials. So here we can see the difference between compression and injection molding. So uh, usually for the, com the, the the compound used in the in the oil and gas uh, because of the high uh, hardness, uh, it is uh, the compression molding is the preferred uh, uh, process and uh, uh, it is the most used uh, in this market. So the webinar is finished and now if you have uh, your first question, I'm here for you. What should I consider if I need to find a low temperature seal? So yes, thank you, Virginia, for uh, the question. Um, it's not so easy to give you an indication about the low temp, uh, um, low temp, because uh, uh, as I, I have explained you before, uh, there is also a, always a big difference between the, the various uh, temperature. Um, my suggestion is to apply uh, five degrees at all the FKM uh, material at, at the tier 10. If you have a, um, um, a tier 10 value of minus 20, my suggestion is to apply 5 degrees and um, it is also possible to use up to minus 25 uh, and maximum 10 degrees at the others. In example, HNBR, if you have a tier 10 of minus 40, you can use it up to minus uh, 50, but uh, it is a suggestion. Uh, of course, I'm talking about uh, static applications. And uh, if you have uh, uh, if you have other requests, please contact your manufacturer that uh, probably uh, he has the experience to uh, explain you better how you, you, you can use your uh, com the compound in your uh, uh, low temp applications. Eric, why are FFKM seals so expensive? Why is so expensive the FFKM? Uh, that's a good question uh, because the, 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 the compound is absolutely expensive. Only to give you an idea, uh, a standard compound, an FKM uh, 70, can cost, uh, a, I think, a, a raw material uh, can cost from 20 to 25 euro. Uh, the FFKM material start from 3000 euro. So you can imagine the difference in the price of the O-rings is uh, absolutely incredible. But that's it. Uh, we, we, we buy the material at this cost and uh, that's no, there is no chance at the moment to reduce the, these uh, prices. Another question is, uh, since the base polymer can be produced by different manufacturers, is it possible to identify the type of polymer used in gasket? Uh, th th there is no difference uh, uh, in the compound, if we call about uh, performance, but uh, of course, if uh, uh, if you want to, 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 to understand if uh, your supplier has used a compound uh, or another one, uh, it's very hard. There, is some, there are um, some uh, tests that can identify some um, uh, fillers or some uh, basis polymer, 
but it is not uh, simple. It is not easy. Uh, if you, you want to understand if uh, in your compound there is a genuine viton from the pond, from chemos, or a technoflon from uh, uh, solvation lexis, that's uh, really very hard. Uh, very hard. Uh, you can ask at your uh, um, supplier to use uh, one one basis polymer or another one. You can also uh, ask uh, to uh, put inside uh, the compound a filler that can identify the, this compound. But the basis polymer really is very hard. In this case, what I can say, uh, you have to trust your supplier. <laughs> That's it. You have to ask them if uh, you want to use a genuine Python or uh, and that's it. No chance, unfortunately. Thank you, Eric, for your good presentation. OK, guys, uh, thank you very much, Virginia. Thank you very much for uh, uh, all the all the assistance you give you gave me. Uh, thank you very much the Valve Campus for this opportunity. And uh, again, thank you very much at all the present and uh, for your attention. Ciao, ciao. I wish you all a very nice day. Bye bye.